the seven costly and complex challenges of big data analytics. Hi, my name is Thomas Hazel, and I'm the founder and CTO here at Chaos Search. At Chaos Search, we transform customers' cloud object storage, like Amazon S3, into a massively scalable database, going after use cases such as observability, security, and application insights. Today, I'll be talking about the third and fourth of the seven challenges of big data analytics. This episode will cover data destinations and governance. We will outline what they are and why they're important. But the focus will be on the problems one encounters at scale. You should see these episodes as a series where each leads into the next. Think of them as a journey, a data journey, where we'll examine everything from the actual sources, generating the data, to the extraction of value from them. So let's get started. What are data destinations? In a very abstract sense, data destination is another input along the series of process elements in a data pipeline. However, when calling out an element as a destination, it's really seen as the final destination, such as a database, a data lake, or data warehouse. And yet, any element within the data pipeline has an aspect of a final destination and scaling challenges. It is common to have no more than three elements in a classic data pipeline. The source, where a polar and or center element initiates the data movement, and the second is the final destination data platform. Now at scale, a third data lake element is introduced to buffer the first element with the final element. But just about all cases, the data lake is part of the story at scale, even when it's not in the middle. Often, it is the case that data lakes are the backups if any part of the pipeline fails. In this scenario, after the pipeline has been restored, the data lake is used to replay the stream of events. As mentioned in the first two episodes, there's a clear theme on the importance of cloud object storage in the data journey. So how is data destination related data governance? In fact, every aspect of a data pipeline can and should have some role in governing. By definition, governance crosses so many boundaries of the data pipeline, even from international standardization, such as GDPR requirements, to HIPAA and SOC 2 compliance, to actual RBAC controls on who and what can see and have access to the company data. In the case of our discussion, the latter is the topic of importance. Let's assume the biggest issue with data governance is on the final destination element of the data pipeline. We can say this is where all data source streams come together and where actual access, the analytics, is initiated. The wonderful thing about databases, for example, data warehouses, is that relational solutions typically have a very strong RBAC construct when it comes to access. Often, this is at the API level of control. And for the majority of use cases, this is just fine. However, there are governing principles that this is not enough. For instance, data from different customers or companies may not be stored in the same data set. In other words, data at rest needs separation and control, and not just from an external API. And here's where, once again, cloud object storage shines. The ability to have storage isolation per any constraint is a powerful concept. In the case where data lakes is in the middle element, one can isolate data at rest and pipeline it into a temporary table in a database warehouse or index pattern in a database such as Elasticsearch. Now, leveraging data lakes as a true isolation and governance platform is nothing new. Object storage services have amazing identity and access management controls, such that any object within the repository can be governed. It's just when the data is moved out of the data lake, that is where the time, cost, and complexity of governance really shows the problem. And this is where we at Chaos Search went all in on cloud object storage. Here at Chaos, 
we don't own the customer's data. The customer grants our access rights to their cloud object storage through well-known policies where we fully index the data in the repository and store the indexed data back in the customer's account. These indices are controlled by the governing rules of the customer's isolation requirements, where the isolation is both compliant at rest as well as external APIs. In other words, the admin sets up how data should be isolated, both from a persistent and access perspective. A true selling point to our solution and a major differentiation compared to existing products. The salvation is how to simplify and streamline the process, as well as make it performance at scale. From a practical perspective, when you have a data lake as your destination, it is really easy to set up data governance at rest. For any topic, think data source, one would and could create buckets or folders in a bucket where this source topic is specifically stored. From there, one could have subfolders named by customer identifier or objects within the folder named with identifier. This is something that a database is just not designed for, particularly when scale is in the thousand, if not millions of topics or identifiers. Nobody wants millions of tables within a database, no one. And this is where object storage and chaos shines once again. The ability to isolate data at rest and access in a specified isolation constraint or bring multiple data points together that governance allows. And finally, we have been talking about storage and access from a data governance perspective. The last aspect of governance is the data lifecycle. When there are rules on how long data can be retained or if a customer has the right to be forgotten, all this adds significant complexity to the underlying data pipeline particularly the final element. And again, cloud object storage to the rescue. Since data can be isolated at rest, it can be deleted simply and immediately. And since cloud object storage has a built-in retention policy, objects can be naturally archived and deleted. Did I say I love object storage yet? So many good things, infinitely scalable, secure, extremely durable, and yes, wonderfully inexpensive. One just needs to go all in on its capabilities. And this is the perfect segue into our next episode, the challenges of data platforms, such as databases, data lakes, and data warehouses. See you next time.